Have you ever wanted to see whales up close, swim with them, communicate with them like Dory did, or just love the underwater world of Avatar 2? Well, if so, you're in luck. Hi, let's take a quick look at Patrick and the Whale. It's certainly one of the most fulfilling connections I've ever had with any animal. As someone who has always been fascinated by the biological and emotional wonders that are whales, I was fortunate enough to attend the Austrian premiere at the Film Casino in Vienna, where I even had the chance to ask Patrick and director Mark Fletcher a somewhat cheeky question, which I'll get to at the end. Patrick and the Whale follows Patrick Dijkstra as he travels to Dominica to find this special whale which he has named Dolores so that she can help him show us the hidden world of her species thousands of feet below the surface, while shedding light on the fascinating nature of the sperm whale, its intelligence and complexity, as well as its current and past relationship with humanity. And they do an incredible job. Dijkstra and Fletcher manage to beautifully convey the complex nature of these majestic creatures and the emotional relationships they form, not only with each other, their family and their children, but also with other creatures like us and the impact we as a species of 8 billion people can have on their lives. If there was ever any doubt that animals can feel, I can assure you that after watching Patrick's journey with Dolores and Can Opener, that doubt will be no more. And they visualize this alien world, which is not only part of our planet, but 71% of it, with some of the most stunning underwater material I have ever seen. The gigantic nature of these creatures creates some monumental moments that makes you feel like you're watching a science fiction movie set on another planet with entirely different rules than our own. And then you realize that these structures you're seeing are living creatures that not only feel emotions, but are actively trying to share them with you in the most humble way possible. I absolutely love the cinematography and how they managed to capture these moments by playing with a sense of scale and depth while also creating moments of intimacy. And they enhance that experience with a soundscape that completely immerses you in Patrick's world. It's a combination of a wonderfully romantic and at times surreal score combined with a very dreamy sound design, punctuated by actual whale sounds that make you feel like they're trying to communicate with you, while also sharing their emotional state and creating tension. The only thing, and this has nothing to do with this movie in particular, they could have made not only this documentary, but all of them better really, and this is what I asked Mark Fletcher, would have been a high frame rate master at 60 frames per second with a 360 degree shutter to create a more immersive image by increasing the temporal resolution with a higher frame rate while keeping the motion blur almost identical to standard frame rates by shooting at a 60th of a second. That way you could deliver a visually flawless 30p for broadcast, while showing the 60p version in cinemas and on streaming services. Who knows, maybe we'll make that leap one day, but even without it, it's a wonderful and unique experience. In conclusion, if you've ever wanted to see these majestic creatures up close, loved the underwater world of Avatar 2, chuckled when you heard Dory communicate with a whale, or are just a human being, really, Patrick and the Whale is a must-see experience that brings you as close to interacting, swimming, or even communicating with a whale as we're likely ever going to get. And who knows, maybe someday Patrick and the folks at SETI can use AI and machine learning to decipher what the whales are saying, and I'd sure love to listen to them. But until then, that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching. And if you like this video, you may enjoy this way of water video as well. And I'd love to see you in the next one.